Uh, I'm going to talk about rapid prototyping, and uh, of course, we're using AngularJS, uh, but I'm focusing on Deployed, which, as Brad mentioned earlier, is the framework I was working on before I started working on the Angular team. Uh, and uh, you'll have to forgive me, I know there are a lot of talks about backends that go with Angular, so this is yet another one. Uh, so first, about me, I'm a Googler of the Angularian order, and you may say that I don't look smart enough to work at Google, and you haven't seen me on Twitter, so you don't believe that I actually work on Angular, but here's proof. I have an Angular hoodie on, I have an Angular shirt, I have a Google badge, and I'm at an Angular meetup, so that should be proof enough that uh, I am who I say I am. Um, and uh, also, I'm the originator of Deployed. Uh, I can't take full credit for Deployed because uh, Richie and Dallin actually contributed more to the current version than I did, but, uh, but here's some proof of that. I'm wearing a Deployed shirt. I'm next to someone else wearing a Deployed shirt, and I'm next to Richie Martori's little brother who, uh, who was a contributor on Deployed. His brother wasn't a contributor, I, I should say. Uh, I'm also kind of an expert in shipping lots of apps quickly. Uh, Richie and I worked together at an agency before where uh, we, we put out a lot of apps that would only be alive for a couple of months, and uh, those kinds of apps have a little bit of different constraints than uh, big production apps, so I, I've learned a few things. Uh, so uh, that being said, the, the point of this talk is to talk about the philosophy of building quick apps um, and some of the tactics using Deployed and AngularJS to accomplish that. Uh, so quick turnaround apps, what does that mean? So an app that tests an idea, uh, you have this awesome idea for an app, it's going to make millions of dollars, is it actually going to be useful? Um, that's something you want to just really quickly find out if you're wasting your time or not. Uh, UX experiments, you have an existing app, you want to add something to it or try a different uh, taste on, on how it works. Um, you don't want to spend a lot of time with a lot of production development overhead on those kinds of apps. A minimum viable product, something you want to get to market quickly. Uh, marketing campaigns, like I mentioned, personal tools, something that's never going to leave your own network, uh, like a brain for your robot, or contests, hackathons, etc. Those are the kinds of apps I'm, I'm talking about in this presentation. Um, so there are a few things you want to think about differently for fast apps. One is substance over style. Uh, with these, these CSS frameworks like Bootstrap and, and Foundation out there, uh, you really could go without writing any custom CSS and put together a pretty usable application. Uh, so when prototyping, it's best to avoid that as much as possible because I don't know about you, but I, I waste a lot of time on CSS once I get into it. Uh, runtime performance, uh, you can do queries that are a little more expensive for these kinds of apps. You don't have to do a lot of uh, MapReduce or, or um, optimizing those kinds of things because you're optimizing for developer time. Uh, fewer cooks in the kitchen, you need less people. You could probably just have one person, and if that person does something wrong, it's not that big of a deal. Security, you should not overlook security. You should put it at a different layer, though. Um, uh, if you're building an app for yourself uh, or just for your team to experiment with a prototype, uh, you can handle security on the network layer instead of inside the application and save yourself uh, some trouble. And you can also just limit the amount of data that's exposed in your application. Um, and so the tools for the job in this case are going to be deployed, which handles the server magic, uh, bootstrap, which is handling the UI magic, and in a couple of places I'm using another Angular library called Angular Strap. So deployed, what is it? It's an open source server built to make it fun to add backends to rich client applications, much like Angular, built to make it fun to build front-end applications. Um, so I'm talking about prototyping in these quick apps, apps that you might throw away. Uh, is deployed just for prototyping or is it for production? Well, that's up to you to decide. I, I've run it in production. Um, we've served, uh, we've seen tens of thousands of users a day on it. Um, but there are other projects and services that have better support and maintenance. Uh, this is uh, something I, I spend some spare time on and, and a few others make some contributions to, but there are services like Firebase, uh, Strongloop has a new tool called Loopback, and, and they just post, uh, posted a blog posting today that uh, tells how to uh, convert deployed apps to their, their, uh, their framework that's a little more geared towards enterprise applications and supports multiple databases. Um, it uh, favors developer productivity over serving speed. So there's some things like real-time dynamic queries you can do in Deployed that uh, if you're running those in production and you're serving millions of people, you're, you're going to have to have a lot of servers to, to handle that. Um, user management is half-baked, like there's no forgot my password functionality. Um, and the session and auth management is a little bit hard to extend. So you have basic login, uh, username and password, um, and you can do some security around users, but uh, if you want to go beyond that, then uh, it's, it's not that great. But it is improving. Uh, I'm, I'm actively working on it. Others are, are making contributions to it. And so, so things like the, um, the dynamic queries, we're, we're making that a little more efficient and also improving the user management. So 
I'm gonna get in some live code uh, and we're gonna build a diet tracking app. And this is the thing I was originally building uh, with another uh, backend service, which made me want to start building Deployed uh, a couple of years ago in 2011. Uh, I was really frustrated with how, how much time it took to build the backend uh, when I was just doing simple data stores. Uh, so let's get cooking. So I've already downloaded the Deployed CLI. Uh, I've installed it from deployed.com and I have the command line utility called dpd. Uh, so if I were creating a new app, I would just do dp dpd create ngconf, but I've already created the app and I'm in it right now. So what deploy created was this app.dpd object, which is the config object for my app, uh, this data folder, which contains my, my MongoDB databases, this resources folder, which contains some, some modules that provide backend resources to my app, and this public folder, which much like Express or other Node.js frameworks, uh, contains my static assets. Uh, so we're gonna be spending most of our time in this public folder. Um, but first, let's just start our app up, and I'm going to pass along this, uh, this flag called dash D, and, uh, which will open my dashboard for me. Oops, I'm in the wrong folder. And so then it opens my dashboard, and I see nothing here except an empty canvas. Um, and that's kind of the idea. We want it to feel like something uh, that's inviting you to create an application and not too much info to get in your way. Uh, so deploy is made up of these things called resources, which are what you would think they are. They're, they're a server resource, much like a, an object or a model on the back end. And we have two that are built in, but this is an API that you can extend and quickly build other resources to add. So collection is just a, a collection of, of objects. It's a MongoDB style collection. Um, you, you can create one and define properties for a collection. And user's collection is like a collection, except it adds things like routes for logging in, logging out, um, fetching the currently logged in user, and some session management. Um, so let's start off by creating a uh, collection called foods, because we want to be able to track foods we're eating all day. Um, so let me size down the screen here. So, uh, so in my dashboard, I've created it, and once it's created, it opens to this properties tab where I can define the properties of my collection. Um, and it tells, give me some hints here to say um, how to define these properties, but I'll just go ahead and add in a name. So this will be the name of a food, and I'll make that required. And a uh, nutrition object, so I can have the nutritional facts about a food. So we'll make this an object type, and we're done. Um, but uh, we want to see some data here, and we haven't added any data to this collection yet. Uh, I've gone ahead and created a, a sample script to populate this with data. And now when I go back to my dashboard, I see that uh, all this, this uh, food has been added. And in this script, I'm just using uh, the, our simple front-end client called DPD to, um, to create all these, nothing special. Um, and let's see, so I've got, I've got my foods created now. Um, and now that I've created this collection, I can actually go directly to this route in my browser, and I can see all the foods uh, as an array here. Uh, and I can, uh, I can already post to this, I can update objects by ID, I can get these, and I can delete them. Uh, I'm not authenticating anything at this point, so, um, so I, it's free game. So, okay, we've got foods, that's nice. But now we've, we need to add users to our application. Uh, so before I go into this, why don't we just take a look at the application we have. Uh, we have nothing right now. We have an application that has a home route and it doesn't do anything because we have no data and we haven't really added anything to our application. So what I want to do is have this detail view show up and uh, show a user's own activities. Um, so in order to do that, I need to have a user log in. And to do that, I need to have the user's collection. So I have another script here that will populate users. And then when I go to look at the data for this collection, I see it's created a bunch of usernames so I can test the app with those. Now that I've got users, I want to bring in a, uh, a little component I, I open sourced uh, called DPD user, and this, uh, I'll share the links for this later. Um, and let's go to our home screen actually, and uh, just drop this in. And what this does is it just checks to see if the user is logged in. Uh, if not, it shows a login form. If they are logged in, it just shows their username and, and the link to log out. So if I 
had that. And I, this is on Bower. I've already installed it. I didn't want to risk network um, issues by installing it. Um, so I see this component here. And I'll say username 1. And I've logged in. And now that I've logged in, I see another route here, my nutrition, because there's a service that, uh, that hooks into this that uh, shows if a user is logged in and that user's username so that I can go to this and see my own things. But I haven't added anything to that yet. You see if I log out, that goes away. I'll log back in. Okay. So let me go ahead and add the same component to the um, detail view since we'll want it there as well. And so even though this view doesn't do anything yet, I can see that uh, it at least has my, me as logged in. Okay, so we've got users and we've got food. We need something to tie those together. I need to be able to say what I've been eating all day. Uh, so let's create another collection. And this will be the last collection we're creating here, but it's the most important one. It's called activities. What are the activities I'm doing? Oops. There we go. So first we wanted to find the properties. This is always the first step. You can't add data until you have properties. And this time we'll set, um, we'll set the user, which is the, uh, the person who is uh, adding the activity. Uh, and this is something, uh, this is required, but I'm not marking it as required here um, because we're going to set this dynamically on the server. Uh, we also want to have a food that's associated with it, and I'll set a food. And this is just a reference to the foods collection, just like user is a reference to the user's collection. Um, but these are strings, so they're going to be stored as uh, string IDs. Um, and then we want to have the quantity, the, the number of things I've eaten. And this will be required. And we want to have the time, which is not required. Uh, because we'll set that dynamically. Actually, food will have required. Uh, so now we've got this collection, and we've got, uh, oh, I accidentally populated this with the wrong data. Let me delete this and do this again. This is because I didn't wipe out the database before recreating the project. So we'll say um, quantity, the food, the user, see I can edit these properties even if you have a, a collection you can rename properties or change them as you go and it will update the entire collection. Um, and so user, what was the last thing I need to have the time? And not required because we'll set it on the server. And so now we have a blank activities collection and I'm going to populate it with activities. And this one takes a while because it's something like 500 activities I'm creating. Okay, there we go. So I have all these activities with random quantities, with uh, random references to foods in the database, and random users here. So now that I've got that, let's get back to our application and see how we can incorporate it. Um, actually, before we jump into the application, I want to show you a feature called events and deployed. And this is one, it's, it's, the title is a little bit confusing. Events are kind of a middleware that happen between a user's request and something being persisted to the database or retrieved from the database. Uh, these are good for, um, for uh, making relationships on the fly or doing cross-querying when you're getting things, but also validating things, making sure the user log is logged in or has um, proper access rights to something they're trying to edit. Uh, so in this regard, we want to, when somebody posts, we want to say this.time equals date.now, and this.user equals me.id, we'll say dot .username. Um, and uh, so this is actually the object in question. So if it's something that's being get, this is the response object. Uh, in posting, this is the object that's been posted and we're adding some things to it before it gets persisted to the database. Um, and while I'm in the events, I want to add another one on the get. 
that when, um, when they're getting a food, I want to actually attach the food object rather than just have the food ID pass to the front end so I don't have to make multiple queries. Uh, so this DPD object I mentioned earlier is something that's available on the back end and the front end as a JavaScript library and it always has the, uh, the resources you've added to your app at, available on here so you can do operations like get. And in this case I want to do uh, this dot food which will get me the food back. So this is querying by the food ID I've added on this activity and I want to attach this dot food equals food. Uh, so now if I look at um, slash activities. Uh, this is going to be a really long request, but um, take a look. Um, you see that food objects are attached here with, you like, see here's a nutrition object. Um, but let's actually implement this in our app. So another uh, component I open sourced is called EPD collection. So this just takes the uh, path to a collection and uh, which is activities in this case. Uh, it can also take a query so I can filter it by user and I can sort it. So these are all Mongo style queries here. Uh, and then I can also give it this object to tell it how to, how to arrange the properties. So this is something I've declared on my scope uh, to, tell, to tell the directive how to arrange the, the uh, property names in the table in columns. And uh, let's go ahead and open our view here. And so now I see this, uh, this list of things I've been eating. Um, so lots of macaroni and cheese, Milky Way, Raisin Bran. I've been eating a lot and it's all in a really short period of time which is really concerning. Um, <laughs> but, but that's how I work at Google. We have snacks all day so, um, so let's see. Uh, so since I'm logged in as myself I also want to be able to create activities from this view. Uh, and so I've got this other directive. This is just a, um, a custom directive I created for this application. This is not open source, I'm sorry. Um, it, it just checks if username is, is me, username. These are both things that are on my scope in my controller. Uh, if, if it's me, then show this form that lets me create a new object. And let's also just show this nice little heading that tells me whose, acti whose activity I'm looking at. So I see it's my activity. And I want to eat another Twinkie. Um, and I'll say I want to eat five of them. So then I see her over here. It's at another Twinkie at 2.13 p.m. Um, if I refresh it, this would actually go further down the list because this is the real time it was posted and other times are randomly generated from a range from right now. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's always the latest thing at the top of the, the list. Um, but seeing this in a list is only so helpful. So I created another directive, and this is open source. Uh, if you ever want to add a nutritional information directive to an application, then this is perfect. Um, and I will certainly share this link. Um, it, uh, so I have this, this, direction, this directive that takes nutritional info and shows it just like the nutrition facts you'd see on a box. So I'm a little scared to see it, but let's look at my nutritional information for the day. Okay, lots of cholesterol. Uh, and these are all made up nutrition, by the way. These don't really, the Twinkies are actually really healthy for you. Uh, uh, so lots of saturated fat. Um, okay. Uh, not, not too bad for, for how much time this covers. Um, and so let's see, let's actually, let's go ahead and add the same uh, resource to our home view. Uh, but let's look at it for, for all, all kinds of users rather than just myself. So I can see what everybody's doing. And then I, uh, let's refresh and go home. Now I see the same thing on, on the home view. It's, it's still limiting to 25 people, um, but it is, uh, it is everyone, not just me. And you see I've added another column here because the directive supports defining which columns you want shown. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could look at uh, this other user's nutritional information. Oops, I did the wrong route. So I can see what username 5 has been doing. And you see the form isn't here because I'm not the user I'm looking at. And it doesn't say my activity because it's not me. Uh, but let's look down and look at their, oh yeah, they're way worse than me. They've, they've really been overdoing it. Um, okay. And uh, you know, that's my presentation.